Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast, and this weekend is Commander Legends pre-release weekend. But how do you even begin building a deck for Commander Legends Sealed? Well, let's dig in today. Now, first of all, you're going to need six packs, so contact your local game store and see if you can arrange to come pick them up. It's also worth noting that Commander Legends does not have pre-release packs. You'll just need six packs from the set to play. Now, in most regions of the world, there won't be actual in-store pre-releases going on. But that said, check with your local game store to see if they're running anything online, for example, through Discord or Spell Table. Additionally, you can always take your pre-release deck and play it against friends, whether one's in your safe social bubble or even online via, once again, websites like Spell Table. Anyway, You've got your hands on six Commander Legends booster packs, well now it's time to crack them open and build your deck. Now Commander Legends sealed deck rules might be a little bit different than what you're used to. You're going to be building a 60 card deck, and of course you're going to need a commander, and your entire deck needs to match that commander's color identity. For more information on how all this works, watch my video right here. Because of this, the first thing I would recommend doing is cracking open all your packs and seeing which legendary creatures you opened up. Remember, you're getting two per pack. You've seen his disc, we'll now meet Nevenroll himself. Nice, Kadama of the East Tree. That's a powerful partner. So I would be shocked if I used it, but this foil prismatic piper is gorgeous. Hello, Kalfner, how's it going? Ooh, spooky, Tevish Zot. Be careful if you partner up with him. You get the idea. So look through your legendary creatures and see if any really interest you as your commander. Aside from just choosing your favorites, be sure to look through all your partners for really good synergies. Because partner lets you have two commanders, there's some great combinations you can put together. Now, unless a commander really leaps out to you, you should sort the rest of your cards by color and then begin looking through to see which color has the most cards you would want to play with. You can also, of course, just look for strong bombs you want to play in your deck. Court of Bounty, yes please. Blasphemous Act is a commander staple for a reason. Sweet Gum Recluse is indeed sweet. They'll never see it coming. In addition to just bomb cards that are really powerful, really keep an eye out for Evasion. Commander games can really gum up, and abilities like Flying or Trample are excellent for getting through damage, which is not only great in Commander in general, but also with Monarch in the format, you will want to be hitting your opponents for damage so you can become the Monarch and take the crown. Now keep in mind, you can only play cards in your Commander's color identity. So you can only play a three color deck in this format if you opened up a three color legend. So a lot of the time, you're going to be playing two colors. As for my colors, looks like I'm playing red and green. Let's smash. Now, once you have your colors chosen, you're going to want to find about 35 cards to play, including your commanders. I recommend playing about 25 lands in this format. Now, while many good practice sealed rules apply here, it is still commander. So you're going to want to make sure you have plenty of long game plays. Commander games will often go long and you will have tons of mana at your disposal. Don't ignore playing early creatures entirely. You're definitely going to want them when the Monarch enters the game, but making sure you have some awesome cards at six or more mana is going to be important for your commander deck. One other thing to consider is how your commander impacts your mana curve. Normally the idea of a mana curve is you want enough things at each mana cost that you will find something to play on those turns. But keep in mind that because of your commander, you will always have it available to play on that turn. For example, if I have a two mana cost commander, well on turn two every game, that commander can just come down. In addition to your normal staples of bombs, removal, and evasion, keep your eye out for mana acceleration and card draw. These are the cornerstones of the commander format, and things like mana rocks, artifacts that make you mana, are really good in this format, and you will often want to play all the ones that you can. Now let's take a quick look at the deck I built. Now here's the red-green deck that I built. Let me walk you through it. We'll start with the commanders. These are pretty integral to the deck. We've got Elena, Kessig Trapper, and Kadama of the East Tree. Now basically every game, I'm going to want to play Elena on turn five, then play Kadama on turn six. That will let me tap for six red mana to my mana pool with Elena, and if I play another big card, then Kadama will let me play another thing for free. It's a really powerful combination, and that is one of the many things about partners to keep an eye out for. Now the red-green theme, is power matters, as you see here on the Tuya Bear Cloud as one example. There's a number of cards in this deck that care about power. I have kind of a suite down here of them, with Soul's Fire and Burning Anger, which will deal damage to a creature or player equal to a creature's power, Monstrous Onslaught, which can wipe out entire huge swaths of my opponent's creatures, depending on how big my creature's power is, and although I would not normally play this card, Soul's Might, which can really do some huge damage in the late game. Imagine you have a six power creature, you cast a Soul's Might on it, and you play either Burning Anger or Soul's Fire to start dealing 12 damage to anybody at will. That's a game ender right there. When it comes to my early game, I'm really looking for early game acceleration. Cards like Finhorn Elves, Three Visits, Moss Diamond, Farhaven Elf, and Commander Sphere, plus Sisei's Ring will all help accelerate me to play these late game cards really quickly, especially because Kadama of the East Tree lets me do so so efficiently. 
but the one thing red green often has trouble with is running out of cards. So I'm using the Monarch quite a bit here. I've got this great Court of Bounty, along with two copies of Crimson Fleet Commodore to give me the Monarch, and two copies of Staunch Throne Guard to give me the Monarch. That's potentially huge. As another source of card advantage, I've got some Cascade. So Sweet Gum Recluse is an awesome card in this deck. Not only is it going to come out as a surprise potentially, give me a bonus card off the Cascade, and make, make my stuff bigger, but used uh, cleverly with Kadama of the East Tree, it's very easy for me to generate a lot of additional plus and plus encounters this way. Maelstrom Colossus and Annoyed Altasaur, also huge creatures that trigger Cascade. Cascade, by the way, will also trigger Kadama again, so that's really, really fantastic. The Monarch will really help me draw cards, but additionally, if the game is going long, Lore Seeker Stone and Dreamstone Hedron are two other huge ways of drawing cards. I do have one board sweeper here down in Blasphemous Act, which is going to be very, very nice at the right face of the game, and plenty of ways to get damage through to make sure that I can stay the Monarch. For example, Grafted War Gear and Haunted Cloak with Giving Trample is especially nice for that Monarchy. Dragon Mantle, by the way, keep in mind this pumps a creature's power, which is really nice with these power boosting effects. Burning Anger plus Dragon Mantle lets even a small creature start taking out some really huge opponents. My curve is a little light early, but I've got some good stuff going on all across it, and I can play cards in most turns of the game, I think, and it'll work out pretty well. And I feel like this is a good example of what a red-green Power Matters seal deck might look like in Commander Legends. One other thing to keep in mind is that every two-color combination in Commander Legends has its own theme and some of them are more subtle than others. If you want to learn what all of them are so you don't miss any yourself, check out my video here where I cover all of them. And finally, I just want to say, this is Commander. It's a format all about having fun. So there really is no wrong way to build your deck. You can just pick the colors you like or the cards you like, put them in, and I'm sure you'll have a good time. So that's a quick look at how to build a Commander Legend Sealed deck. If you have any questions, you can also leave a comment below or check out my pre-release primer article on Daily MTG for more information. I'll talk with you again on Wednesday. And in the meantime, may you prepare for building the best Commander Sealed deck you can. You got this. Oh, hey, there's my preview card, Dargo the Shipwrecker. We're onto our legendary slots, so nice big giant pirate with a great backstory. And then Numa, Jiraga Chieftain for our uh, for our Elves deck, or our Plus and Plus Encounters deck, I suppose. And oh, 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 oh boy, well, we are off to a strong start.